I reckon one of mine is half dingo because she we have these but we have these burrows in the garden where like she'll just disappear out of sight. And oh that, wow, that's really unusual for a dog unless it's a dingo. So yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's uh, this is my first time talking to somebody on on the other yeah. side of the planet. So yeah. me too. Uh, it's, it's been it's a, a good experience so far. Thank I mean, Alex for technology. Alex and I have been exchanging Instagram messages for sure. a while now. So I feel like we have been talking, but this is like face to face, virtual, virtual. Yeah. You know, this is this is quite cool. Yeah. So yeah, you, you don't appreciate the time difference until you actually speak. Oh my gosh! Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. When we were trying to schedule this, I, I initially told everybody it was going to be 6 p.m. And then I went on Google and I'm like, oh, no, it's going to be five. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can go from central time in America to West Coast time. No problem. Right. But uh, yeah. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You got to keep going. Keep going and then lose or yeah, add a day. That's fair to note. So it's 5 p.m. here in, in Kansas City. And then it's right after nine there. Or uh, three minutes before nine, according to my. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's so on we're, Tuesday. It's Tuesday. There. It's Tuesday there. Yeah. It's Monday here. Wow. Well, there you go. Yeah. Perspective right there. We exactly. don't know. We don't even know what day this will release. We're so confused <laughs> on days right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, All right. Well, we'll start you off with a, a real easy question. It's basically just, you know, tell us about yourself and, and what led you to here in your golf journey to where you're at now. It's a simple question, but God, the answer takes absolutely forever. <laughs> That's uh, great. Yes, I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I left Australia in the mid '90s and rocked up to the UK. And you know, I was I was an occasional golfer, nothing special, but rocked up to the UK with some money in my pocket and um, joined a golf club. Uh, first time I properly joined a golf club in my twenties, mm-hmm. um, and you know, I didn't have the benefit of. Uh, you know, um, the, the parents with the money and the country club and everything else. And just uh, like my, my children, unfortunately, because they're both uh, doing very well for their, for their ages. But I, that wasn't me, right? So I came to the game a bit late, if you like. Turned up to the UK to live with my grandparents in their uh, final years. And uh, living in this tiny little uh, one-bedroom apartment, if you like, with a very low ceiling, etc. And I started working at a golf club. And uh, uh, long and the short of it was, I was practicing my putting. This is when Tiger was winning his third amateur. Mm. And I had the golf on the telly. And with the low ceiling, I couldn't do anything in the apartment. Right? It was like we're talking a tiny little box in the middle of London. So I was, I was putting into my electric ball returning, you know, the thing that punches the ball back. Yes, yes. Back. The batteries in the bottom, okay. And that was great. So I was watching Tiger on the telly. At least I was doing something, you know, I was active. No chance to make a full swing or even, you know, it was, we're talking about 10 feet wide, but, you know, the, the room that I was in. So right. no, no point chipping the golf ball. Um, and then all of a sudden, my girlfriend got a hearing infection. And, you know, we're talking about a really, really confined space. So even though it was a separate room, you know, walls like paper and all of that, and the noise of this thing hammering the ball back, you know, it was, she had a, effectively a migraine. So she put her head out the door and said, you know, please, enough's enough. So I'm watching Tiger on the telly. I can't even putt, right? So I'm going absolutely bonkers. I'm sitting in, and I'm, I'm an active person. I, I'm sitting there and I, I, had to, I had to do something. So I'm looking around this tiny little apartment and I spied, spied a, a beer container, a beer box, an empty beer box. And oh, I'm just sitting yeah. there and I'm looking at it and I'm looking at Tiger and looking at this and looking at it. And I do not know what inspired me, but I got something that was roughly this sort of shape. And I bent the sort of, the, you know, the edges around and the back around. And I painted a circle on it here. And then I put it on the ground. I put a telephone book underneath it. And you've got a ramp. So the ball rolled up, the ball rolled back. And even its most basic iteration, it was quiet. Like the, the, the battery-powered machine was hammering the ball back. 
I had a ball return and it was virtually silent. So there's the hole. And I would just sit there and practice rolling 100 balls through the middle of the target. And what I worked out was if you put two telephone books underneath it, you got more of a slope and mm. the ball would roll further. And if you put a novel underneath it, well, geez, it would only roll a couple of feet and you'd be practicing little putts. But that was the basic inspiration. If she hadn't got sick and if those things hadn't interacted, we wouldn't have the device that's been you know, out there for 25 years. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know what I was expecting you to say, but that was not what I was expecting right. you to say about <laughs> starting off with a, the ear infection. And, and, and that's, that's amazing. But the, the best part I think most people can sit here and relate to about this is that machine and the piercing noise yeah. that it did make. Oh. Like, it was I've, so I've loud. I've got one. I've got one sitting yeah. over there. If it's dead quiet, it sounds like slamming a garage door closed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can remember being in my grandparents and and they we had a uh, house down or they had a house down in Brownsville, Texas. And they had one of those ball returner devices and I always remember like jumping every time it would like <laughs> it would fire it back and it was like it, yeah, like ah. <laughs> and then you stick Yeah, then I'd stick my finger in there and it would hammer on your finger. It was hard. It yes, it hurt. It hurt. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that's hilarious. I think people, I think people will really pick up on that fact and then, then putting the, the uh, telephone books underneath there and just figuring that out of that, it would come back and now it's silent. I mean, yeah. but that, that was the first thing. It was a, it was a better, you know, inventing a better mousetrap, if you like. So it was a better, it was a, a quiet ball returner that didn't need batteries, didn't need electricity. And depending on the angle that I had it on, I could return it three feet or I could return it 15 feet. Wow. So you, you tell me another ball return around, you know, if you're on a really fast surface, the, the, the thing would return 15 feet. You imagine trying to hit a six inch wide gap or gate from 15 feet away. But you know what? The more you practice doing it, the easier it becomes. And eventually it's just like shelling peas. And you just you just take it for granted that that's what you're going to do. You're going to hit this little tiny corridor. Yeah. But, you know, if your average high handicapper out there, that, you know, they're, and, and I have to manage people's expectations. So they get one of these, they think, oh, man, it's, gonna, it's just a ramp. It's going to be easy. And the first few putts, they might miss the device. And all of a sudden, they're going, oh, man, it's broken. Or, yeah, it's, something's wrong. It, mate, look look internally. This is you. If you can't right. hit this inch wide gap, move closer to the device right. until you're not missing it anymore. And then as your skill develops, you know, you move further and further away. Right. Yeah, I'm guilty. I was... Guilty of totally missing the ramp like the first time. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, this will be. And then I like hit it and it's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, there, there's a problem. I'm not even remotely close to hitting my line <laughs> when I'm putting. So, and, and so, mate, did you take the, did you take that um, message on board and do something about it? You know, here yeah. you've gone from three feet, six feet, whatever it might have been, 10 feet away, and you missed this little tiny gate like this. Did you blame the device or did you look internally? No, it was totally internally. I mean, it was, to yeah, I mean, it was total like internal and specifically, I think with the latest model, your tour, your tour model, it, you've got all the lines on that, on the actual putting floor, which really Absolutely. helps. But, but it, it's amazing that I still missed the ramp of, of knowing that I have all those lines there. I'm still, it was like, oh. And I think I putted from the very back of it. Yeah, so we, I set you guys up yeah. for failure. I put it on the hardest level and said, go, go for it all the way back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is your first taste of it. Go for it. Yeah. All right. So can I, can I now tell you, and this is, I'm not going to say controversial. Well, it's controversial because it's not PGA. It's not how the PGA teaches, but this was my greatest discovery. Right. And I have had this thing for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And if you imagine the guy that develops a Rubik's cube, what does he want to do? He wants to solve the damn thing. Right. So here I've got a I've got a tool that can sit any distance from you and will reward you for clicking the ball into the target and then knocking it out. So you know a, a level of precision that has not been seen before. And there's a reward, and the ball goes back. So, but in the early days, back when I had the cardboard one right again around the corner here, um, the very first cardboard beer box was just roll it through the middle of the hole yeah and then i developed one with a, a, a depressed hole in it that you could catch and release etc but when i had that very first cardboard i heard that one cardboard <laughs> box model i would stand i'm going to say six to nine feet away from that 
and I would roll balls through the target and I would count them one, two, three, four. And whatever my record was, you know, I was trying to beat it. This is before catch and release. Mm -hmm. If I'd rolled 50 balls straight through the middle of that target, I wanted to roll 51 before I walked away. That was just my nature. I want to set a goal and beat the goal. And that's what this one's all about. So I, I, I tell the story that when I got up to around about 100 putts, all of a sudden this thing kicked in inside of me that being not being brought up through golf, coming to golf late, I didn't know about pressure. I didn't know right. what pressure meant, right? I just thought you walk down on the golf course, you hit your shot, you hit this. You know, I'm absolute new really in my 20s about what it meant to hold a ball under pressure. So coming, let's let's call it 99. So I'm rolling 99 balls in a row straight through the middle of the target. Perfect. I could do it on autopilot. But as soon as I hit that um, personal best, this putt to beat my PB, I mean, like yourself, I missed the round. So I've just rolled 99 perfect balls through the middle. It's inconceivable that on the 100th, you would miss. But it mm. was because there was something on the line, something to me. This was for my, you know, to, to you know, surpass my previous best. And I felt it. And I, for whatever reason, come to that later, but I, I actually missed the device. And I went absolutely purple face, wanted to destroy it. You know, I, I had, by this stage, I've rolled hundreds of thousands of putts. Right. In, right in an hour, you can roll 400 putts on this thing. So, you know, I think six months in, I've rolled hundreds of thousands of putts. I'm getting pretty good at this. But then all of a sudden, I've got an absolute fail. I have missed the device entirely and didn't know enough about it as to why, etc. But I absolutely had an explosion. It was yeah. a heads off moment. And so what I did was I wanted to kill it, but I was conflicted. I And it, it's hard to describe this without pictures, but... I want. I absolutely wanted to smash a ball out of it as hard as I could. I was so sure. frustrated. Yeah. But it was my only cardboard device. You know, I just I made this thing. It was my baby. So what I did was I didn't take a backswing and I just took a big follow through, literally on the putt. I got the putter up around my ears somewhere, and the unusual thing, and and this is, happens in the blink of an eye, and maybe not everybody would see it, but the putter, like literally a couple of inch backswing to up around your ears, the putter goes from behind the ball to in front of the ball. Well, if you think about a normal putt, you hit the ball and the ball is always in front of the putter. I had just hit a putt and got the putter in front of the ball. And I stopped there and I, I just, and I don't know what it was, I just thought, I haven't seen that before. Usually you see the ball hit the putter and the ball dis disappears. I've just seen the putter outrace the ball to the target and automatically, I just plotted both of those things on the end of a, a spectrum. And I thought, how do I get the one that's in the middle? And I've got a putting stroke that actually follows the ball to the target. So when you're standing there and you're looking down your eye line, and for anyone else looking externally, you can't see it. But it's like, you know, we do lawn bowls in this country. What do you do? Baseball. Any, you do pool where you follow the ball. Well, you right. throw a dart. You wouldn't throw a dart like that. Well, then where's the information in there? You, you have the arc of this uh, moving piece that coincides with the arc of the dart. Well, effectively, when you're following the ball, you're just exaggerating that stroke through. Long story short, when I started following the ball to the target, I don't think I've missed the target. Wow. Since. And we're talking two and a half million putts. <laughs> A lot of putts. <laughs> and it, it all started with missing one out of a hundred. It started yeah. with missing one, and then you know yeah. it was just it just seemed to build from there. And and people call me crazy, and it's a combination between arcing on the way back and then straight down the line on the way through. Well, until now you've got straight back, straight through, or you've got arcing, or you've got old Sam Sneed with his side saddle. I've mm -hmm. got a little bit of all of those three in there. And you know, when I get people in the studio here, it's, it's what I teach. And I get beginners and I, you know, I make them proficient very, very quickly, just in that basic understanding of distance control. I thought the, I thought this was going to be the origin of your name. The putting nerd is what I thought that miss of the one of the one out of a hundred was going to be like where it clicked. And it, it, so, it sounds like maybe it was a little bit. There was some well, frustration. Well, it was absolute frustration. Uh, the, t the putting nerd comes from when I was out there inside the ropes on the European tour 
um, for three years and I had my little sharp handy cam that was about, you know, yay big, sat it on the ground behind the device. And because the device is unique, right, you, know, you may be able to see off in the distance there, but when the yeah. ball is in the target, when it sits right at six o'clock, there's no break, right? And if I just nudge that ball out of the target and it rolls straight down the, re- the mat and it's between the white lines, that is as straight as you could ever hope for. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Here is you with your skill versus a perfectly straight putt. I mean, you know, the old phrase, uh, adage, uh, every putt is a straight putt. It's absolutely bloody true. If you can't start your ball and keep it on this track for as long as humanly possible, right. then heaven help you on a breaking putt, you know. And, yeah, so, you know, when it can roll down a channel, when it can roll up and back on a channel that wide, you know you've got, and when you can watch the, the logo on the ball just roll purely mm-hmm. over, end over, end over, end, you know that you're doing something right. That is just so, you know. Um, it's, impre- it's impressive yeah. to think, like, yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you. Like, every every putt is straight. I feel like that's something I think about unconsciously a little bit in you know and just and just because i think i feel like to me and the speed is not i don't know if subjective would be the right word but there's 10 different ways that you could make the same putt it, you could hit it hard right into the hole you could you could maybe arc it into the hole you could you know, it, and that's why i think it's it's very interesting i i dave and i talk about this quite a bit of like you're never going to make a putt you never start online you know, if Absolutely. you ever, if you ever, you know, and that's what I think kind of opened my eyes a little bit with trying your, your device is, is like, <laughs> missed the, the ramp, yeah. <laughs> and the, you know, and that's, it, it's like, gosh, if you're not even coming close to hitting down the channels that you're talking about on a, maybe an eight or eight foot putt or a nine foot right. putt or something like that, how the heck so, are you going to make so any? Let, let, let's take that. Let's, let's take that, um, you know, little piece of knowledge and let's cast it forward. When you know, you know, if, you, if you're only starting one out of 10 balls online, you've got to rely on a misread and a misput to sort of, you know, cancel each other out. <laughs> mm-hmm. once, you're, once you've got, you know, there is no break in this, right? We've, we've already established that. Once you know you can roll 100 balls in a row, row absolutely dead straight, then you walk up to this putt thinking, okay, do I want to die it in? Or hang on, this right. is for birdie bugger this, this is on the edge and this is with some speed because you know what? I don't care about that four foot putt coming back. Because yeah. I stand here and I can do 200 of those in 10 minutes on this thing. And I know I can start the ball in over it, but it's the confidence that you just, you know, everyone says if you can bottle it, well, this is the next best thing. When you can stand there and watch that logo go end over end, you just know that your stroke mechanics are absolutely sound. Yeah. yeah. Once, you've got, once the- you've got that, then you then it's how you apply that to a brain. Right. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of the device is is it does teach you you can die a ball into the hole or you can ram it four mm-hmm. feet past. Yeah. Plus it's teaching you, hey, you know, you can you can get it into the 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 size of a cup, but also guess what? You can hit a target the size of a golf ball as well. Absolutely and if you can hit right. a target the size of a golf ball, your margin for error just is threefold now versus you know being all over the place it's like stuff. practicing darts by just aiming at the bullseye and once you've got the bullseye down you then just transpose that skill to how do i hit the double 20 how do i hit the triple 16 once you know that you've got this you know this yeah. precision to be able to hit this tiny little thing from distance okay now how do i adapt that to whatever the conditions might be out there that's, yeah. that's what this does and yes. when you know, but when you can roll a hundred balls in a row down the down the line, and you know we haven't even come to the catch and release, but you know the, the reason that the catch and release came about was it's perfect lag. We're talking, you know, you can set it up for for half an inch worth of worth of play to two or three inches worth of play, but being able to control a ball to that far from 10, 12 feet away that takes precision, right? Yeah. You guys know you've tried it. It's not easy. Mm-mm. My personal best with get it in and then knock it out is 14 in a row. It it doesn't even come close to the world record. This guy with a Scotty, former tour player, 23 in a row. But it was just mechanic. You, you would swear this putter was just shoved into a robot. It was just so mechanical. And there were two different strokes. Lag it in, strike it out. Lag it in, strike it out. And you you because you're not, and I, you know, there are putting mats out there where you're putting the holes in the carpet. 
you mm. can literally just ram this thing in all the time and, and right. there's a reward for a bad stroke there there's no reward this this will just expose you know whatever weaknesses you've got unfortunately this is going to put him to the sword. But on the other side of that, here's the way to, you know, improve. Yeah. I took, I took two takeaways from that was a, you're going to have so much confidence on those three or four footers coming back using this yes. device. And the second takeaway was in the very beginning of this of like, you made me just, you blew my mind of thinking there are some really bad, good putters out there who are misreading and hitting bad putts and making them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so the compliment of a good putter could just be a fa- like a complete false statement because they're just accidentally making putts all the time. You know, they didn't, they didn't hit their line. You would, you would have to think that over time that would pan out to not be the case, but <laughs> yeah, it's true that, that someone who's not proficient with the putter can right. have a, a red hot streak just for what you said. And I think yeah. a, f- a few years ago, they put Jack on Sam Putt Lab and found that I don't quote me, but like he aimed three inches one way and then he, you know, compensated with three inches the other way. And the two things, you know, cancel each other out. Yeah. You don't have to be perfect. No one ever said you did. And the thing I used to say to people 20 years ago, and you guys probably don't know, but Billy Mayfair had this hideous putting stroke, which is <laughs> like more things than a game of whatever that is. And but he was good at being Billy Mayfair. You will, yeah. this device will make you better at being whatever you are. But should you want to come over to the, you know, the light, you know, and, 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 and get away from the dark side, you know, if you want to come to the light and just make everything as, as efficient as it possibly can be, this will reward you for that. Yeah. So, you know, we've talked about the catch and release challenge. The ball goes in, ball comes out. You know, what's your best? Uh, like, hey, wow, well, I did it in 10 shots. Fantastic. Now go and do it in nine. Now do it in eight. And there'll come a time where you get two in a row and three in a row and four in a row. Well, maybe Billy Mayfair's best on this is ever is ever going to be maybe two or three in a row. Mm-hmm. But we've already talked about guys out there getting 23 in a row. And I'm getting 14 in a row. And, you know, I stopped practicing many years ago. But whatever, this is just going to make you better just through sheer repetition, if nothing else. Yeah. But if you get sick of missing the ramp, if you get sick of hitting that second ball, too wide it's whatever it is you know like you would go and see a pro to get your swing back on track exactly the same here but it's only take testing line and distance control so what can we do to get you better at that well i've got my way other people have got their ways seems it seems like your way is pretty su- successful yeah. if the world record is 20 23 times i did it took me like 15 minutes to get one to just rest in it. And but, then, but, and, okay, so that's that's immediately your benchmark, Billy. So you've got, yeah. you've got you, whatever it is, if it took you 20 strokes, 30 strokes, whatever it is, however good or bad it is, right? you've got it set up in your hallway or in your office or in wherever you might be. Next time you walk past it, you want to beat that score. Mm-hmm. Right? And you will, if, you, if that's your attitude, you'll watch it come down 20, 19, 18, blah, 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 and all of a sudden, you, you, and, and for me, when I got my 14, it was I was just listening to music and just putting and I had the camera on and I wasn't even counting. Yeah. And I just got into this, you know, I'm going to call it the zone because it's probably the closest thing I'll ever come to being in the zone. But it was just, I didn't feel like I could miss getting it in. I didn't feel like I could miss getting it out. And it was just bang, 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 bang. We're talking 28 perfect cuts. I mean, you know, stopping the ball like that and then, hitting a line that's, you know, you've already said two and a bit inches wide. Right. And, and doing it from nine feet away. Do, 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 do. And then I stepped back and went, oh, well, that was almost like an out-of-body experience. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd, had, I'd had seven, eights, nines before, but 14 absolutely came out of nowhere. Wow. Yeah. That's a, yeah, it's one of those, I think your subconscious just takes over where you're just, it's just the, the, the mechanics are there. And you're just yep. going, you're just getting up there and doing the same stroke. Boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. And you when, know, you, and when you, you know, when you take the pressure away and when you take um, the, the mechanical thoughts away, when you know when you know that everything is pretty damn good and it's really in the right place, and then you let, let the artistic bit take over. Right. I'm not even going to be claim, claim to be close, but, you know, that's the speaks and that's the watching the thoughts. That's the, you know, I've learned the technique. You know, the Picassos, right? I know what to do with the brush. Chuck it out the window, right? Let's let's paint. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> exactly. You make it sound so simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not rocket science. Right. I, I yeah. Can, it's if you can create top spin, and that's top spin. All right. So if I do this with a putter, you, and, and you've got a, a in one of the new divide restriction divides, or just a light, even a see it go like yeah. this. If you do this with the putter through impact, where's the ball going to go? It's got to do this. So there's the first part. And then yeah. if you've got an arcing stroke this way, well, how do you follow the ball that way? So it arcs on the way back, it comes in, and then through impact, it's just uh, the way I explain it when I'm teaching kids is, all right, we can, here's your golf ball, we can get the bottom edge to go past the top edge. And look, oh, I can miss it over there, I can get it to go straight, or I can miss it over here because of that. That's fine. But what if we did this through impact? And it, it's not actually because it comes a little bit from the inside. But what if we literally did that through impact? Where's the ball going to go? You, you tell me how it can go sideways if I'm getting the bottom edge to go past the top edge of the putter at impact. It has to roll end over end. And then come back to my missing the boomerang and heads off. You can either hit a ball at the target where the ball is racing away from the putter. You can get the putter to overtake the ball like I did when I had my explosion. Or you can simply follow the ball down the line. And when you follow the ball down the line, what you've got is reverse engineering. Because you walk out of the putting green, you see a putt from here to here, you stand at uh, 90 degrees to those two points, and you simply do one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three. I think that's going to be a two and a half Mississippi putt. So from ball to tee, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, it's about two and a half. So when you are then standing back, and remember on the boomerang, we can train ourselves to follow the ball. You're looking for a putt where the putter head travels over the ground for the count of two and a half Mississippis. If you have a putting stroke where here's the head of the putter, there's the hollow there, if that putter head travels over that distance to the beat of two and a half, providing you had enough takeaway, the ball is in and around the target every single time. It's you imagine being able to get a 30 handicap or, or a six-year-old child. And when I had them in the store, I worked in retail for many years. And you get little Johnny come in and he's six years old and he, and mum gives him the junior putter and goes, hit this, right? You know what little Johnny's going to do, right? This thing's going through the wall. Bang, he wallops this thing. How do you tell a kid, okay, the hole's four feet in front of you in, on, on the carpet here. You've taken a seven iron swing at it. How, you know, all I say is, look at the speed you want the ball to go. Let's get the speed of the putter to do exactly the same thing. Within a few putts, the kid's following the ball to the hole. For an adult, it's so much easier. And you imagine being able to take three and four putts off a guy and give him one and two putts in, in exchange. It's a very powerful thing. Wow. That's fascinating. Yeah. I, I just, wouldn't, my brain is going a million miles a minute, like <laughs> understanding that. It, yeah. it makes perfect sense. It's, yeah. it's, I look at, if I had the whiteboard out and I could show you, there'd be a little bit more graphic or um, some of the videos up on the boomerang putting uh, Instagram. One of the latest ones was me following the golf ball down the line. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it flies in the face of everything PJ, but that's, I've been, I'm not PJ, I've been outside PJ for, for many, many years. It's just wow. a better way. I'm just waiting for everybody to catch me up. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Same, same here. That's what gripping golf is all about yes. too. Yeah. No, they, will, they will come, build it. And they yeah, come. exactly. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being ahead of your time. Yeah. Absolutely. Man. Absolutely. Yes. Being oh, a revolutionary. Awesome. So you, you alluded to it and, you know, uh, we, you, you said you started out with just a flat beer carton. Um, yeah. and then you, you said later you developed the catch and release. How did the catch and release come about? Uh, the catch and release came about because I made a cardboard version that was one ramp up, one ramp down, and it had a little V section in the middle where you could click a ball into it. And the next ball would run up a channel, knock it out. Long, long story short, before I had the sleek design with the single hole, I'd already had the idea of catch a ball in a hole and knock it out. Mm. Um, and then it, 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 we made a couple of timber prototypes and then we made plastic prototypes and that sort of thing. And when we discovered that we were able to put the, the hole on a thread and wind it down to get it exactly, exactly right, um, you know, that's when it's, uh, that was, you know, that, that was, uh, the most adjustability you can build in basically mm -hmm. but that's for your tour players that's back when i was in there with woosman rose monty yells blah, 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 you, you name it those were my days way back when and we had a, a unit of, um, 
a tour model back in those days. It was really, really good. You know, the adjustable feet, adjustable holes, six different height settings. Um, recently, Henrik Stenson put up a video of him teaching his daughter how to putt using the same device that I'd given Henrik 20 years ago at, at Wentworth. Um, you know, in, indestructible device. There's no, virtually no moving parts to it. <laughs> and here he is teaching the next generation. It was very nice to see. That's pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty yeah. cool. You'll have to. We'll have to send uh, Hendrick Stenson um, to make sure he knows which T box to use. Yeah, going yeah. forward. Did, did you see? Yeah, <laughs> so, I, I didn't. I didn't see, but I can imagine. Yeah, he he. They teed up. What was the? It was a Hero World yeah. Challenge, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, him yeah. and Spieth were in the first group, and they got to the seventeenth hole. I think it was. And they were using a different tee box on the last day, and they both teed off from the wrong tee box and incurred a two stroke penalty and yeah. had to go back and re tee. Yep. And yeah. so they both did. Yeah. It's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. So, you know, those are the, you know, you expect that from us. And I think I did something very similar with my daughter recently, but uh, you don't expect it from those guys. So it always makes, Makes headlines. <laughs> yes, right. I know. I know. I was just like the fact that it was all over golf, you know, channels and stuff like that just made me laugh because I was like, they're humans. They make yeah. mistakes, you know. I mean, they. Uh, the one recently we had was um, uh, what's his name? Herbs and spices um, turning up to the wrong city to play the to the to the wrong event. Um, uh, what's his name? Australian player just qualified from the European tour. Oh, really? Was that in the was that in the United States that it happened? Yeah, yeah. So he's turned up, but he's turned yeah. up. Wrong, wrong yeah, it was like it was like Colombia. It was like a city yeah, of Colombia. Right. Yeah, it was like a city of <laughs> yeah. And he went to like <laughs> yeah, Colombia, Georgia, and it was like <laughs> Columbia, Col something else. Yeah, and oh, oh, man. Yeah. oh yeah, it, we're cool. humans. We make mistakes. I mean, we're in a hurry. Right. We're trying to do things. Yeah, and there's all sorts of time zones. I mean, it's crazy. So yeah, as we know. As we know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. So, I mean, you, you've talked about, and, and we see from the literature that comes in the box, You, this is now the uh, 15th version that you've... 15th, 15th version, yep. So wow. what, what's, what keeps you, what keeps driving you to keep making it better? Because honestly, I, I think uh, it's a great product as it is, but somehow you're you finding ways to make it better. So... You know, making it better means making it more affordable, mm. more mass marketable. Um, you know, in, in, since I've been doing it, the price of oil has gone like that. The price of shipping has gone like that. Mm -hmm. So we've been looking for ways to get the maximum amount of bang in the box for the money. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, so that, that's your box. You get two mats. You get a training device. You get a number of other little bits and pieces. But the way we've done that is to have a map that's six inches wide. You don't need a map that's wider than that unless you, you know, want to, you know, want to stand there and practice breaking huts, et cetera. That's, that's fine. Um, so we get two maps in there. We get the device in there. It's all packaged in such a way that, you know, you need to iron it when you, when you mm -hmm. undo it. But it's tre <clears throat> tremendous value for money. We've had product before that weighed one and a half kilos. Well, the whole, the whole thing here with the two mats weighs one point. 1.7, 1.8, what's it, two and a half pounds, something like that. Um, it's how do we get more value in the box for less money? So before we didn't have two mats in there, we had a very skimpy little thin piece of polypropylene. And people would look at the mat and go, gee, the device can't be very good because the mat is mm -hmm. very, very simple. And I always said, well, the, the, the value is in the device, right? What we run up to the device is inconsequential you know as long as we know the speed of it we've got some guidelines on it it really doesn't matter you can use these on well putt mats and everything else um, that are different speeds again um, but once you once you um, have two rubber backs down so it keeps the ball on the mat if you're on timber floors and, and tiles and things more often it will still come off if you're, if you're hitting the ball on an angle it'll come off on an angle um, but we've got so much bang for your buck in, in the box and we're always looking to get more in for less money, if you like. So this is really the first mass marketable one we've come up with. Most of the other ones were specifically designed for tour pros. We had a few that were designed for uh, Asian markets and things like that. Uh, obviously, the cardboard ones we moved on a long way from. But we've, we've just been rejigging the formula not not with a view to a mass market 
until now. So and for Australia, it's going great guns down here. We've got one of our Aussie guys on the box here. Um, we recently had some products sell into North America. Um, they're testing the market up there for us at the moment. But you know, the guy I want to talk to really is Brad Jackson. You know, I, I just if, if we if we could replace, you know, no offense, Brett, but if we could put Brad on the box for a US market, sure. Uh, geez, I think your safe ways in your Walmarts and people would be calling us. So yeah. Um, that that and but you know, I've got to get one into his hands. I don't have any connections if anybody's listening and they want to hook yeah. us up. Um, you know, uh we, we could certainly make it worth your while because that would be the ultimate partnership. But yeah. you know, we've discussed your um Ben Crenshaws and things and you know in the in the past, but really he's a he's a man. So really if we get if we get him there you go. Right. Perce- uh, perceived value is huge. Exactly. I mean, oh, perceived- absolutely. Yeah. If he yeah. puts his, uh, his seal, of, the seal of approval on it, um, yeah. we can each have little matching islands in the Bahamas somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, do, do, don't forget about gripping golf, too. Right. I mean, no, we'll no, no, like a third island. island. Yeah. 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 You can have the, the off, uh, offline <laughs> islands. There, no problem. Yeah. There you go. That's awesome. I would love to say that Brad Faxon is a longtime listener, uh, yeah, but we're not sure. Good. Yeah, we're, we're not sure. I mean, maybe he is, you know, so yeah. we, we don't know. He's, got, he's certainly got his finger on the pulse of all things golf, so. Yes. Oh, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. That, that'd be pretty cool if you could get him on the box and stuff like that. And I would say, I would say when it arrived here, it was, it's well packaged. Oh, yeah. Like I, it was great. It comes together and it comes out of the box really great. So obviously yeah. what you've been doing on the 15th version is making it more marketable and more, I guess, right. resell, selling it more. It, it comes really nice. Like it, we opened the box. It was all right there. It was easy to unfold. It was easy to get out. Yeah. yeah we ironed it. Took, it. took two minutes. Yeah. Gen, yeah. Gen, Gen Zin, we, we, we've got the formula pretty good. Yeah. The reason, yeah. The reason we deviated off the screw in hole, etc., was it was just too difficult for your average golfer to sit yeah. there and spin it, go back, test it and do all this. Oh thing. yeah. You just, you just clip the leg on, you know, put mm-hmm. a disc in the hole if you want to make it a bit more challenging. Take yeah. it out if you don't, and work on what you need to work on. If it's hitting the ramp, mate, work on hitting the ramp a hundred yeah. times in fifteen minutes. If it's yeah. if you're a better player, if you're an elite player, all right, well let let's push it out there and see, you know, how many catch and releases we can get in a row, or you know what our what our best is. Um, you might be able to see over my shoulder a few putters and things there, but <laughs> you know if if you've got a garage full of putters, well have a death match, right? Here's my yeah. toe hang, whatever it might be. Um, Versus my face balance, which one works best for me? Which one can I get the ball in and in and out of the hole with? And whichever one it is, man, put it in the bag. Yeah, no big. kidding. Yeah, you, you just explained my my breaks during work. <laughs> I got a handful of putters, and I, I usually have death matches. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's good. Yeah, I mean, for me, like I, I believe the original mats. Did you call them the Carnoustie mats? Is is that correct? What, correct. Yeah, we went, to, we went to Carnoustie in '99. They were color match. But it was basically just a, a polypropylene, so it was a very fast yeah, material. Yeah, very fast. You, you still had to iron it. Right. Um, it was a good map, but it was you know not, nothing compared to these boy bad boys, which are you know exactly. Bad. Exactly. And I, I actually liked the original mat, you know, just mm-hmm. it, it fit the whole theme of it, just very utilitarian, very easy to set up, easy to use. And, and when I, I saw the rubber right. backing on these mats, I, I was floored. I'm like, this this is Awesome, because now I can use it on my tile floor. Yeah. So it, it's wow. a tremendous. Exactly. It's not, it won't slip around. Right. Like I said, the little bound edge on it. If you're pretty good and you can roll it up there pretty straight, the angle of the ball coming down just uh, down bounces off those little edges. Mm-hmm. So if you're on timber floors of the nighttime and you've got you know a partner sleeping or whatever, you know, like my my case, it's going to be pretty quiet. And then it's if you're quiet or, or anything else, well, it's it's yeah. just easy. I actually find the the sound that it makes going up the ramp to be very soothing. Oh. It's, it's got a very soothing sound going up and back. It, no, a whole, really that's a whole new marketing ploy right it's, there. So compare that to the contrast that with the noise of that battery powered ball returner. Mm-hmm. And uh, my very, very, very funny story. So I was making these things out of cardboard, right? And I was, when I had, uh, I, I get it and show you, but it's a, just an A4 size. So I had one that would fold down to A4 size was adjustable it had a, a, a cup that you could uh, decrease the, the depth on it, it was everything but it was made out of cardboard and i would sell them at camden market in, the, in london for 10 pounds so 20 australian dollars 15 us and i would sell them to members of the golf club and all that sort of thing 
And on, on during the week, here's me buying cardboard from art shops, buying green surface, you know, sticky back green surface, buying stickers from sticker shops and just assembling these things, bagging these things up and then selling them out of this market store. And it was taking me forever to stick this bloody green surface on this, <laughs> on this cardboard, right? So yeah, I, I opened the yellow pages and we're talking early 90s in the, in the UK. I'm scrolling through felt manufacturers, right? And I found these guys in Birmingham, right? I was in London, so that's across the country. It's, mm. it's only a few hundred uh, clicks, but it's, you know, in London traffic, it's takes right. forever. Um, and I found these guys that did, you, uh, they were, they, they did MG, uh, they did Land Rover, Range Rover, um, Jag. They did all the upholstery on the inside of the car. So if you oh. think about the roof of the car, yeah. the line, it's a flop surface, right? So it's mm -hmm. like a billiard table. And I found these guys and I've called them up and I've said, hey guys, look, uh, I've um, my name's Alex Moore. I'm selling a few of these things. I need to get this green surface and put it on my product and da 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 Can I come and see you? Yep, no problem. Made the appointment, did all that. <laughs> Rented a car, driven through all this traffic out to Birmingham get there, walk up the stairs, I'm in the office, I've got all my samples, got everything else. I'm here to see Marius. And the secretary looks at me like, who, who the hell are you? And I'm going, I made an appointment a few weeks ago, here to see Marius. She's gone just a minute into the office, big man's office, and they're in there for a few minutes. And I'm sitting out there thinking, what, 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 no idea. He's come out looking like this, all sheepish. And I'm thinking, what's going on? He goes, you're Alex Moore, you're here to put um, flock on your boomerang putting machines, right? You called me on April Fool's Day, the 1st of April. You said you want to put flock onto boomerangs. I thought it was one of my mates in an Australian voice. I thought it was one of the mate, one of my mates taking the piss out of me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he walks me around the factory and then puts his hand in his pocket and makes the first injection molded product that we ever had. So from cardboard to ABS to plastic, because this guy had had such a nightmare thinking that I was winding him up and you know travel halfway across the country to see him. Uh, and it was it was a, it was a good relationship, but you know it was it was what you can imagine standing there face to face. I you know wasn't expecting you. You were talking about putting flock on a boomerang for putting, right, man? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny that april 1st that's yeah, hilarious. I mean, it just happened to be april yeah. fool day that i'd call him up I mean, what, what are the chances yeah. yeah it's you know just hearing the stories it's 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 just like one fortunate event after another for you right it's it's <laughs> like this was destined to be you would think so but 25 years later i'm still this little tiny one-man guy up against all these big oems sure and yeah. the story uh, like i you know, when I was inside the ropes, I had 90 guys out of 170 guys using the product on the European tour. As soon as I disappeared from the tour, then obviously all that went to pot. But while I was out there, one of the last events I went to, Forest of Arden, I'm standing there and I'm about to um, thrust my a putter in, in Retief Goosen's hands and get him to try the product as it was back in the day. And all of a sudden, Harold Schwartz jumps in front of me and hands him a C Groove putter. And I'm going, right, I'm blown away. Anyway, Harold um, uh, retrieves putting with this C Groove putter. Long story short, obviously wins the US Open with it. Harold goes from C Groove to Yes putters. Yeah. And I'm, you know, mate, I'm next man in line. And then I would go to trade shows with the guys from the putting art. And we would stand in this little three by three booth and they'd be in the next one. And we'd go, how are you doing? Yeah, we're doing good. How are you doing? All this sort of thing. All of a sudden, Michael Campbell wins the US Open and in his post-match interview says, mate, I couldn't have done it unless my coach had bought me the putting art, you know, two weeks ago. And then all of a sudden, these guys are in, you know, 100 by 100 spaces and we're still in these little 10 by 10. It's not what you know. It's just being in the right place. Right, yeah, right, right place. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Uh, and, you know, I, I sent one Adam Scott uh, three months before, he, six months before he won the Masters. And his dad jumped on the website and bought the deluxe version. I, I cheaped out and sent him the really skimpy one. He bought the deluxe one. We were in discussions. I, he was trying my putters, doing all sorts of things. You know, obviously he wins the Masters. 
Right. And I've, I've got, mate, one word, just one one thing. Sorry, mate, we're contracted to a push now. We really appreciate everything you've done, but <sighs> okay. <sighs> so, but mate, I've, I've got interviews of him on podcasts saying he uses yeah. the device, et cetera. But unless it's a full-blown testimonial, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to do. Yeah. Oh, wow. Boy, two sides of that coin for sure. Right? You never know. This yeah. could be that moment, Alex, yeah. right but here. Right, this could, this could be the moment. <laughs> It's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. I'm always knocking on the door. Yeah, um, sure. You know, my kids joke to me. One of them's a three handicapper. One of them's an 11 handicapper. The only little ones. But, mate, we, we, we will be your endorsements, Dad. Don't worry. We'll get there. We'll, 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 we'll. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's it. such a good story. I love, love it. it. Yeah. So here's, here's something I think that's really unique to your product that I, I don't see from any other products. And it's your money back guarantee mm. on the device. Can you talk about that a little bit? Okay, so, you know, when I started selling these things to um, in cardboard, just to the members of Trent Park and London, at Camden, etc., cetera, um, I'd, I'd hear the story. So it was, um, you know, it was just hearsay, et cetera. But when I'm working in the pro shop up at Trent Park and literally the other side of the, of the golf course, I can hear this little squeaky nine-year-old voice cry out, boomerang, as he, as he holds this putt on the other side of the thing. Because I had all the juniors in the, in the pro shop there teaching all those guys, so it's always been a thing. If it doesn't work for you, then I, that's that's absolutely fine. Let's just you know separate, and move on. But in 25 years, I've had two pieces come back, and both were unopened. So you know you've got this from your daughter or your son-in-law or whatever. Oh, right. thank you very much. No problem. Not for me, you know, for whatever reason, and they returned it. Every you know, you read I mean, there's 300 testimonials on the website. We've been doing them a long, long time. Uh, people that dive deep in it, it will go as deep as you want to go. People that just want it as a ball return, it'll just do right. that as well. Uh, um, but I will, I will buy it back off you if you don't want it. If it's no use to you, I can't imagine why it wouldn't be. But uh, no questions asked, mate. Not easy. Uh, just uh, send it back and and get that money back guaranteed. That's incredible. Two have come back. Yeah. Wow. Two, 25 years. Two. Yeah. Um, and, and 25 years too. Yeah. And that's, and that's the thing to me is just your belief in the product and, and yeah. as somebody that's been using it for years and years and years and has owned multiple versions of it. I mean, I I'm, I'm a believer as well. And I've been trying to drag these guys along with me. I, I think they're, they're, I'm a believer. He, yeah. I'm, I'm a believer. He just won't let me use it. He's got, <laughs> he's, he's got it at his house. Yeah, so. I'm using it. I'm trying to get know, better. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. darn it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Look, I, I say again, my old quote from back in the day was, even if you're Billy Mayfair, you're going to get better at being Billy Mayfair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's to, to get to get it to go from wild and woolly to all of a sudden on track that you stroke, etc. It's not that difficult if you, you know, you can reverse engineer what you see on the device. So we know that the ball sits in the middle. It's perfectly level. So what if I send a ball up there and it's doing this? What if, it, what if it's curving this way? But I know this device is absolutely level and the, the putt's absolutely straight, but I keep seeing it do this. Well, if you've got an inquiring mind, let's look at what you're doing with the putter. Yeah. If you've got your grip, if you've got the handle a little bit low, if you've got the toe up in the air, you know, where, where's that face pointing? Are you then cutting across it? What, what's going on? Have you got it up here where it's sitting on its, on its toe and the lock's looking out there? I don't know. You will know because you're standing over it. And mm -hmm. in the in the new products, uh, you would have seen the, the little view more mm -hmm. box. Yeah, yeah. It, it's got a camera cradle, and if we put the camera in the cradle like so, and we record the stroke from down here at a worm's eye view perspective, you can see, for better or worse, every single thing that is going on in your stroke versus a straight putt. Mm -hmm. So if you see the, you know, here's the camera back here, here's the ball, there's the target way up there. And if you see the putter cut across this way and all of a sudden you see the ball disappear out there or, or cut out there or somewhere, you can put the things together. Right? Yeah. But if you get if, when you get to the place where you can see the ball and the putter traveling down this channel, it's you, when you see it, you know, you record it and you view it and it's poster size in front of you rather than standing over it and hoping to see any sort of little tiny micro moves that you make and you've got no, no chance but once you get this at worm's eye level and you film it and you play it back fast slow however you like you can see the difference when the putter and ball go at the target or when the two things go in opposite directions 
it stands out as big as a poster. All right. I think I think that's interesting because I, first I feel like there is so much knowledge. I guess there's so much power in knowledge, even just in the golf swing, but but particularly here in the putting, I feel like it's kind of somewhat like uh, you know here in the United States, people don't go to the doctor because they don't want to know. And I think the same thing with the, everyone carries around a supercomputer the size of their hand, but no one's filming themselves on yeah. their on their on what they're doing and they could probably benefit so much of just well, in in the comment that every golfer says at some point in time it goes i don't know what i'm doing i don't know what i'm doing I you know that daily <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> and so it's 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 fascinating to me a of someone that suffers from that anyways but i like to try and solve my own problems but i think it's fascinating that we don't take the first step of just awareness of knowing of filming something and being like hey that that would help me a lot. Like you just hit it with like, oh my gosh, you're cutting across the ball. No wonder you're missing all your putts. You're cutting across the ball. And it's if exactly you exactly what you said before, not wanting to go to the doctor because you don't want to know, <laughs> you know how you know what what the prognosis is. For a, a, a gentleman from our local golf club, he said for years my son was telling me I was taking it outside and slicing across the putt like that. But it was only your device when I set it up and I watched this thing that I actually saw it for myself and I actually had to do something. So yeah. two years worth of in the neck from the sun meant nothing. As soon as he'd set this up and saw it, you can't argue, right? If the pub right. is doing this, it's inefficient. Let's get it going at the target. Yeah. yeah. Deliver all that energy right to the ball, push it down the line. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And it can't get any better. If we're doing this, if we're cutting it, or if we're going, if we're doing anything other than you know, really square face for impact and getting the, uh, the bottom edge past the top edge, et cetera. Anything else is working with fractions. So if I'm delivering 90% of the force from here to the, to the ball, then I've got to get out my abacus and start working it out and relate that to the putt. But once you start training yourself to get 100% every single time, mm-hmm. it's like working with whole numbers as opposed to fractions. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to be delivering all that momentum to the ball. and, and Exactly. And- you yeah. know you're getting a hundred percent of the force from one, and then it's and it, and it's repeatable at that point. You know what you're going to get. The outcome becomes the something that you know that's going to happen. Like you, you were talking about Jack Nicholas at one point of like he stands three degrees open and but compensates and stuff like that. It's a repeatable movement that delivers the same outcome each time, and so he'll yeah. he'll get and and that's all you really want is you want right. to be able to repeat it and have the same outcome so you know what to expect. But the first part is is recording yourself and understanding maybe where you can improve. I mean, it goes back to me of of a lot of the same things with the golf swing of of going back to the I always say the nine ball flight laws, but it's really just the nine ball flights that can be delivered from different types of swing paths. It's the same thing as we're talking about it in putting is if you can figure out what you're doing, you can self-diagnose and start to, doesn't mean you shouldn't go to a doctor, but you should still, you should still, you could start there and and get yourself a little bit better. If you wanted to have the second opinion, then you get the second opinion. Yeah. Like your nine nine ball parts, uh, nine uh, flight parts. Yeah, you can imagine different parts of the putter coming into the ball, and different parts of the putter exiting the ball, and different positions the ball is uh, the the putter faces in at impact. So it's not rocket science. How do we get it square at impact and square through impact? Um, And again, multiple ways to do it, and Mm -hmm. mine is just one of them. But if you wanted, if you wanted to be the um, the holistic approach, where you actually get it and you become your own doctor. And when I would have people in retail buying this off me, you know, in 15 minutes, you have not just taught a man to putt, you've given him the information to be able to go on and self-diagnose what he's doing wrong. So um, in every every pack that I sell down the bottom, it says, you're more than welcome to send me one little video of your stroke from here, and I will get you off on the right path. Um, so one, one of those in every box. Um, we're gonna do we're gonna do that. Each one of us at gripping golf is gonna send you one yeah, video. Be, yeah. I'll be very, <laughs> I'll be very kind, kind with my um but, but you don't have to be kind to the us. challenge is you're gonna have to guess whose stroke is whose. That's okay. what we're gonna do. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Based on our profile pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I think I I think I got this. Uh oh. Um, All right, cool. Because yeah. you will see four different, yeah, completely different exactly. putting strokes. But, but isn't that interesting? And and yeah. look, uh, this worm's eye view, I call it a fingerprint of your putting stroke. 
because no. when we know the putt is perfectly straight to start with, it's you, this ball versus a perfectly straight putt. And like you said, everybody's a little bit different, um, but there is there is the Adam Scott of full swings in the putting stroke. There is something that everybody agrees, geez, that's fantastic. I'd love to have one of those. That, that exists out there. It's, and you can self-diagnose and find it, or you can send me a video and I'll try and help you. Um, in 15, 20 minutes, I generally turn somebody around in retail, give them the information to help them and, and sell them one of these things. It's Look, if you were going to spend $120 US dollars on your golf game, I can handle my heart, absolutely swear this is the best way to do it. Yeah. Because the new driver, I mean, I've, I've um, had people on the, you know, on the um, uh, GC2 and in the nets and everything and trying to help pretty manky swings and things like that. But my God, if you can save four, five, six, and however bad you are shots, this is the fastest way to do it. Increase your enjoyment and get you coming back to do more of it. Oh. Love it. Absolutely. Uh, it's so true. I mean, Dave and I played yesterday and we made Dave made two or three 30 footers or no, that was John yeah, that made that some, John. but yeah, but, but then I made it, some good putts. Yeah, he did too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, not great, but good. No, <laughs> uh, but it, that's so true because you can get on the green and everything becomes makeable at that point. Yeah. And, and you should be thinking that regardless, but it, it is one of those things that it really, I think, had I not made some of the putts I made yesterday, I probably would have shot mid eighties and I ended Same. up shooting high seventies. And so Same. it does save four or five strokes and, and, and it gives you that confidence to get up and down. Like if you can get up and down, you can miss a green. You know? What if, what if you made your money? What if you made a living with the putter? What if you made a living at this game and you could save, you know, let's be conservative, half a shot around, let's say a oh. shot around. If you do the math on the calculator, with the number of events you go on, the number of, you know, how that's going to affect your scoring average, et cetera. Do the math on what it could win you for $120 investment. Mm. And back in the day when I had all the guys on tour, um, the very, you know, the, when I worked at Trent Park, the very first tour pro the game on tour was a lovely gentleman by the name of Lee Jones, who was back on the European tour in the 80s. He was trying to get back on tour uh, in the 90s when when I started caddying for him. And we went to Carnoustie. In '99, as uh, to try and qualify, I'm oh, sorry, went to Montrose to try and qualify for Carnoustie. But when I first met him, he asked to take my one timber prototype sample away to the Club Pros Championship up in, I think it was Royal St George's at the time. And uh, he said, "I'll just get you some feedback. Can I can I borrow it?" And I said, "I'm not that. You, you know, yeah. This guy's a tour pro, and I, here's me working with." In the pro shop, like you, you, you're gone. Take this, please. <laughs> so he took it away. He comes back the first day back. He says, "Mate, come over here. I got some feedback for you." So I set it up in in our hotel room, and me and my two mates, um, they were all up here for the tournament, and we're drinking beers and we're holding putts on this thing until like one o'clock in the morning. You know, the boys are getting a bit loud, and you know, just putt, 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 drink, drink, drink. You know, and and very competitive guys. Josh, Josh, Josh. The next day, it's blowing hard out there on the golf course. So they have a bit of a putting contest before it kicks off. Lee comes first, flatmate number one comes second, flatmate number two comes third. <laughs> of all the other guys that are in there. So, and these sort of these um, anecdotes have just been coming in for years and years. And wow. Years. You, you get it today and you putt well tomorrow simply because there's no other device you're going to want to roll a thousand putts on. But in two and a half hours, you can stand there. And if you're, you know, if you're a good putter, if you're someone with skill in it, you can sink your teeth into this real quick. You'll once you realize, oh mate, that's what I've got to do to catch and release the ball, you start to salivate. Mate, you, you this is a this is a scoring opportunity for you. And you start to realize what it can do for your golf game. Yeah. Mate, you, there are people that say to me, mate, when I walk out on the green, I can picture those two little white lines leading wherever I want the ball to go. Mm-hmm. At least starting, yeah. yeah. I think you got your catchphrase and need to put this on the box is get it today, putt better tomorrow. I think that, 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 yeah. that, 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 uh, that is the boomerang, boomerang yeah. putting phenomenon. And yeah. this is the whole more. It's the latest iteration of the boomerang putting trainer. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, you, you go and you read through some of the reviews and it, it does sound bogus, but it is. You literally get this. And because it's so addictive, you roll four, five, six thousand putts on it. <laughs> You go out and all of a sudden, boom. When was the last time you rolled a thousand putts in practice? 
Couldn't tell you. Never. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, for value for money, it comes with two mats in the box. The longer three meter mat is crystal velvet, like the DJ mat. Um, it's fast. It runs at, um, let's say, just over 12. And then the little training mat, the whole more mat, two meter mat, um, it runs at, I want to say, nine ish. Yeah. Um, it will depend. If you put it on carpet, it runs a bit slower. If you put it on tiles or timber, it runs a little bit quicker. Mm. Love it. What else you got over there, Dave? Man, uh, we could, was, uh, I mean, Alex, we could just let you talk for hours. And I, and I can talk for 20, 25 years worth. Yeah. Can you think of any other product that is a ball returner, a skill challenge, and a professional putting aid all in one device? And then it comes with two mats. And then it comes with your camera cradle. If you look uh, back when I did retail and they would come in and say, I can't putt. But it was just, they'd be walking around the putters, can I help you? I can't putt. There's nothing you can do for me. Well, I had people with the yips and, you know, I fix them up with grips and things. But when they have no concept of line or distance control, as a once a, once a month player, as a weekly player, as a player with inefficiencies, 20 minutes later, they would walk out of the store pumped, knowing this is what I've got to do to control my line. And Alex says, if I follow the ball to the target, this is what happens to my speed. You know, you can't, you can't solidify that in 20 minutes, but you can certainly give somebody enough information to go out and, and get on with. Um, yeah. it, it's empowering. And that's that, that's sure. This is why I am still doing what I do after 25 years. I have not hit the big time. I would love to hit the big time. I'd love to be chatting to you from my um, private island somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. Um, despite, you know, Tiger's got one. I sent one to Tiger after all these little um, bits and pieces a few years back. You know, Ernie got one before he won the um, the British Open. Sergio got one before he won the Masters. You know, and everyone's going, when's Sergio going to win a major? I got sick of it, so I sent him the boomerang. Um, <laughs> Ernie, Ernie was 175 in, in uh, putting stats in on the European Tour. I called up Chubby Chan and I said, mate, we're travesty for somebody like Ernie. So I sent one off to his home in Florida and one off to Wentworth. Six months later, he's winning the British Open. He, it's just, it's the boomerang phenomenon. But when, from my time and standing at trade shows, and I would just stand back and listen, and there'd be people just walk past the, the booth and they would say, snake oil. Or they would say, it's a rant, it's just a rant. It's only yeah. when you shove a putter in somebody's hand and say, I just try it. Yeah. And 20 minutes later, they're standing and going, oh, I just can't get it. What the, you know, and, and there's, they're now absolutely engaged in it, but you can't get that just from the external look. It's to, it's net, maybe that's the reason we haven't um, you know, hit those heady heights yet. You just cannot get it from the distance. Yeah. You've got to be you gotta get people to use it. Yeah. yeah. That's we'll we'll get some videos out there for you. And, yeah, that's what people, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what we'll, that's what we'll do. Yeah, and and then we have the Spring Hill Invitational Tournament that we play in at the course that we belong to, and okay. I'm pre I'm predicting that we will finish first, second, third, and fourth because oh. of the boomerang putting. Perfect. 